Here we have the side of a building in a simply drawn diagram. There's something not right in this and my question right at the start is, does it look wrong to you? Can you see immediately what the problem is? Because we'll come back and look at this at the end and see if you have an answer or the same answer. Let's go. We'll start with drawing our windows to make it easier to fit them evenly within our space, shall we? So we'll draw our five windows in and these windows are all the same size. And now we'll put them in a wall. We see our five windows in a wall. Now we are looking straight on at this wall. I want to consider what happens if we tilt our wall further away. I don't know if you know this, this trick of using the diagonals to get the halfway point, but we know that the halfway point is in the middle of our center window. So I can draw my center window here at the halfway point. But now I've also got to fit two windows on each side and there's clearly not the same space on each side. So I'll just do the best I can. And on this side, now what we can see is that the further away the wall becomes, the narrower the windows become and the narrower the gaps between the windows come. In fact, the narrower the wall is. The width of the first half of the wall is a lot more than the width of the second half of the wall. With perspective, the further away an object becomes, the more visually compressed it becomes. And so there's less space to fit everything in. So everything has to become compressed. And the further away it becomes, the more compressed it becomes. The further windows are compressed more than the closer windows. If we were to spin this wall even further, again, I'll give myself a sense of where the diagonals are. So now the center window is here. And again, I've got less and less room for each of the other ones. We can see now with the wall turned further away from us, in fact, the distance between the first half and the second half is greater in terms of width, and that the difference between the first window and the last window is, is becoming greater. We will do just one more, and we'll make it quite compressed. Okay, so here is here is our center one. It's becoming difficult to draw the further ones because my pen's too thick to draw two lines. If we draw it even one more time, further twist it away. I'm drawing the furthest two windows just as single lines because there isn't room to put two lines. And so it's that degree of compression that we see. And we know from experience that when we look at something straight on, all the elements which are the same size look the same size. But we know that when the wall angles away at a greater angle, the furthest things start to get narrower. And we know that the greater the angle of the building moving away from us, the greater this compression becomes across the whole wall. Now, understanding how this operates was very helpful earlier in the week when I drew this in a demonstration. And you can see with all these windows here that there's very strong perspective lines that mark the top and the bottom of the buildings. But we can see that the closest windows to us, there's a fair bit of window detail there. But the further away we go, we see less and less detail and there's more and more compression. The buildings become narrower the further away they go and the windows become narrower. It's so narrow in fact that although up here of course I'm drawing not just individual windows but I'm drawing the depth in the wall of the window and I'm drawing detail of the timber work. Not too far along I'm just drawing lines. By the time I get down here I'm just doing very fine lines to represent the whole window. Learning to transition our widths 
from wider and showing the detail of a window to just becoming a line is one of the skills we need to develop. So let's go back to our original wall. Can we see the problem here? Of course, the problem is that while all the perspective angles are good, the foreshortening doesn't happen. And so I'm the width of all these windows is how it would look if I were looking straight on at this wall. Because there are two sets of principles here in perspective. For the horizontal lines, there's the perspective that angles the lines in different directions down to vanishing points on the eye level. But for the vertical lines, the perspective principle is that the further away they become, the closer together they become. That the object that the lines are showing becomes visually compressed the further away. So there's two, if you like, different principles operating with lines, with vertical lines and horizontal lines. And if we understand the principles, it's easier to see it operating in real life and therefore to capture it in real life. So it's worth understanding these principles if I want to capture how it looks from my position. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope that was helpful. Foreshortening is one of the two main areas of perspective in my opinion. And the more we understand this idea of visual compression, the further away things become, the more easily we can see it in real life. And whenever we can see more easily and understand more readily, we can draw more accurately. So it's worth the effort. But whatever we're drawing, however we're drawing it, of course, the important thing is that we have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.